everybody, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Robbie Robertson, along with Oklahoma State head basketball coach Eddie Sutton. The Cowboys are coming off an outstanding week. They went on the road twice and beat Colorado and 11th-ranked Nebraska. And Coach, uh, congratulations on a couple of uh, just outstanding performances. Robbie, it was a great week for us, as sure you was. mentioned. Uh, we went into uh, Boulder and played a very fine Colorado team. We won 76 to 66, and it took a remarkable comeback. <laughs> I've never had a basketball team uh, since I've been coaching, and that's been a, for a long <laughs> time, uh, make a 21 to zip run on the opposing team's court. I've had ball clubs do that at home, but it's very difficult when you're uh, doing that on the road. And we were down by nine points with 544 to go and ran off 21 straight points to, to go ahead by 12 points and finally won it by 10. Great character on the part of our young men. And then we went on to Lincoln and on Saturday afternoon we beat, defeated the Cornhuskers for their first loss on their home floor, 81 to 68. So we are getting better. Uh, we're <laughs> climbing our way up the mountaintop. You and uh, as I told our ball club, we must continue to focus in on what's at hand. This ball club has come a long ways since we started practice on October 15th, but uh, we still got a ways to go in order to be more consistent and to really be the team that I think we have the capabilities of becoming. Okay, we've got some great pictures for you this week. We'll have highlights of victories over Colorado and Nebraska. You stay with us as the Eddie Sutton Show continues. This past Wednesday, the Cowboys traveled to Boulder, Colorado to take on the Colorado Golden Buffaloes. Oklahoma State trailed by 14 with 14 minutes to go, but then went on a 21 to nothing run, coach, and you ended up beating Colorado in their own building by 10. This is We pick up action half. here in the first half. Uh, that's Sean driving to the basket. Uh, Put you up by three, 13, 10. Yeah, this is early in the ball game. And to Johnny Pittman, nice turnaround shot. Misses it. Good effort on the part of Byron. He keep, keeps the ball alive over to Milt. Milt steps away and hits about a 15-footer. And We had great play off the bench in this game and also again Saturday at, at uh, Nebraska. Corey Williams uh, gets a breakaway and gets it rejected, but uh, Milt scores again. Now you're leading 21-20. We lead for one other time in the first half, and uh, we go to uh, halftime behind by seven. Ooh. That's a, a gigantic dunk, <laughs> dunk right there by Byron. <laughs> Trailing by one and pretty vocal crowd in there. At, uh, For the first the time ever, Colorado going. had back-to-back uh, -back crowds over 10,000. Mm -hmm. uh, they had beaten uh, Nebraska the week before, and they were very vocal. I'm happy to see that uh, uh, Joe Harrington and uh, all those fans at Colorado are supporting basketball because there's a place for both football and basketball. They can be compatible, they can complement each other. We got, uh, this is picking up action in the second half. Good steal by Cornell Hatcher. Uh, one of our players said uh, he must have five arms the way he played defensively <laughs> in that game. He made a lot of steals and made a lot of big plays that allowed us to uh, beat the Buffaloes. You were trailing by 14 when you uh, you make a little 9-0 run here. This uh, basket by Sean. Well, Cornell Pulls made it, it happen. Yeah, good yeah. defense. And he handed the ball off to Sean. We kept making a run at him. We couldn't get over the hump until uh, that last five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> but then uh, came Good rolling passing. down the hill. That's Darren Alexander over to Cornell, over to Matias. And everyone had told me this guy can really shoot the ball. And I'd seen a little bit of what he could do in practice. And in the last 10 or 12 days, he'd been shooting the ball much more consistently. In this game, he lit it up. That's the start of the 21 to nothing run. Cowboys trailed 60 to 51 when Matias hit that three, and then, uh, man, 21 in a row. That, that quieted the crowd, didn't it? Nice turnaround shot by Byron. Byron led her ball club and scored with 23 and pulled down nine rebounds. We out rebounded uh, the Buffaloes 35 to 31, shot 58% and held them to 42% uh, shooting. There's nothing Matias but, again on a baseline jumper. Nothing but net. 60 to 59 now. Cowboys trail by one until another three. That one put us ahead 62 to 60. And uh, Matias was three out of three from three point range. 
We were four out of five as a team, and on this road trip, we were uh, 12 out of 16 from three-point range. Whew. 64-60 now, and make a free throw here. Now uh, you're working that spread offense. Worked very well. Nice pass to Corey for two. Good assist by Byron, and you can see the enthusiasm on the bench. And that's one thing that uh, all coaches like to see. Basketball is a team game. Unbelievable shot by Corey and a few <laughs> acrobatics here, and you can see he is excited. Look yeah, at he that. looks like MC Hammer there. Now that's some of together, those moves. togetherness. That's the way a team ought to be, and that's what's really allowing this team to win. They are together, they are a family. Well, you can see a great deal of emotion, and uh, uh, still in the, the middle of this 21 to nothing run, or toward the end of the 21 nothing run, and uh, the Cowboys have got it wrapped up now, but uh, an exciting victory for Oklahoma State. Good rebound by um, Matias, off to Sean, lead pass to Corey. He misses the little bank shot, but uh, Byron pulls it down, uh, and that's the final score, 76 to 66. And uh, it's always easier to, after you've won, to go on the road to the next place and win. And yeah. I thought this was really a key game for us. I, I, I told our squad this is a pivotal game, in my opinion, and they responded. And as I said, they really focused in. They never gave up. They just kept fighting back, and this team does have a lot of heart. Was there something particular uh, when you were 14 down uh, with 14 to go? Is there something particular that sparked you, that, that got you started on this 21 to nothing run? Because you certainly built momentum all the way through that. I didn't think we had played poorly up to that point, but we really had not generated uh, maybe the intensity at the defensive end. Mm -hmm. uh, we always depend so much in our defense to force turno turnovers that allows us a chance to score points off of the the turnovers by our opponents. In the last 10 minutes, we were able to do that. Uh, we got some turnovers. We played a lot of people early in the game, and people can talk about the altitude not having an effect on you uh, physically. It does have an effect. Psychologically, it has an effect. And we looked a little, uh, oh, uh, just sluggish in the first uh, three quarters of the ball game, but we played a lot of people. We only had a couple of guys that played over 30 minutes. And Colorado is not as deep as some ball clubs. They played five starters, 34 mm. minutes or more. And in the last five minutes, it looked like they had just hit the wall. And our defense allowed us to really force them into a lot of mistakes. We got good shooting. And all of a sudden, we just went right by them. <laughs> Smoked right on by them. Well, the Cowboys uh, did not come home after the Colorado game. Went right straight on into Lincoln, Nebraska to get ready to take on the 11th ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. Unbeaten at home, 9-0 and coming into this ball game. Oklahoma State played great and beat the Cornhuskers 81-68. This was a very competitive uh, contest as most of them will be from now on in the Big 8 play. And uh, there were, you could see the tension was out there. And in the first half, it was like a couple of boxers just sp sparring with each other. And uh, we would get ahead, then they would get ahead. And uh, it ended up at halftime a, a tied ball game. They're a huge ball club. Coach. I've never uh, faced a ball club any taller, a 7 2, 6 9, 6 8, 6 8, 6 2 in their starting lineup. That basket by Byron put the Cowboys up 24 22. Byron had another outstanding ball game. He hit some shots from the perimeter, which many people don't believe that he can hit, and we see it every day in practice. He, he's the best player, in my opinion, in this part of the country. Uh, he's developed into a great defensive player, which allows him to just be sensational at both ends. Now, he's, uh, he, he hasn't gotten the recognition, I don't believe, that uh, he will get in another year. But he led our ball club with 22 points and uh, led us in rebounding with 11. Johnny Pittman with a slam. The Cowboys are up by four here, 32-28 as we're winding down uh, toward the end of the first half. Potter with a three. This is the beginning of the second half. Uh, we set up a play that would allow us to go inside or to come back to John Potter. and He hit uh, a three-pointer to put us up. There's a three by Sean. We were uh, seven out of 10 from three-point range. We shot uh, 52, 55% for the game and held this ball club to 42% shooting. So defense is always important, but to go on the road and hold both ball clubs to 42% shooting and out-rebound them in both games, if you have to pinpoint anything, that was it that allowed us to win. Great defensive play by Darren. That's what we call defensive anticipation, running through the passing lane, and that put us up by four points. This is late in the game. And 
There was another big play here, too. Uh, you're up by five. Uh, Byron misses a rebound, but Johnny Pittman gets down there and picks it up. Johnny Pittman played uh, most of the second half with four fouls and played very well defensively and had eight rebounds. Corey and uh, Darwin and Sean all hitting double figures, and when those three guys hit in double figures and you get play out of the rest of your squad, well, uh, good play, well, you're gonna win. Last bu bucket of the game, and a very happy group of uh, <laughs> troopers right there. You Oklahoma State wins it 81-68, and, and Coach, uh, I don't think there are people, uh, I mean, this is the best ball club that Nebraska's had in, in 70 years, I guess they're saying, but uh, how did you feel going into that ball game, knowing that they're all fired up in Lincoln, 11th ranked team in the country? I always believe we can win. Uh, I always uh, try to preach to our squad, uh, respect everyone, but uh, don't fear anyone. And uh, our ball club knows that they're close to being a very good basketball team. And, and like I said, they are together. Uh, they are a team. And, and uh, there are, we have no selfish players, and that's important. And they're beginning to believe they can win anywhere, and, and that's a, a good trait. Uh, one thing I want to point out, when we got home, uh, we had a big group out there at the uh, airport to meet us, and I know all of our players were just thrilled. The Young Guns and a lot of our older fans were out there, and uh, that really pleased me. We used to get that treatment when we would land in uh, Arkansas and at Kentucky, and I hope that's something that will develop as this program and this basketball team continues to win. You, you keep on knocking the teams <laughs> that are ranked 11th in the nation, you keep knocking them off, that'll happen for sure. Let's take a look at what happened this past Saturday and take a look at the Big 8 standings. Uh, Kansas uh, beat Iowa State 85-78. Kansas State gets their first win in conference play as, as they edged the buff 73-72 and Oklahoma at home beat Missouri 95-87. So as we start a new week, here's the way the Big 8 race looks. Oklahoma State right on top along with Nebraska and Kansas, everybody, all three of those teams at four and two. Missouri and Oklahoma are tied for uh, fourth at four and three, and then Colorado and Iowa State at two and four, and Kansas State getting their first win in conference player one and five. But uh, boy, uh, Coach, you talk about parity within the league. I mean, uh, pretty obvious right now, don't you think? It's recognized across the country that the Big Eight this year is the best basketball conference uh, in, in America. And there's very little difference between the three teams that are at the top right now and K-State, who is one and five. And that's why we've got to continue to concentrate on each opponent and play them one at a time. And if we do that, then we should be in the hunt uh, at the end of the season. All right, Oklahoma State goes, uh, well, they'll be home on Wednesday to take on Iowa State and then on the road to take on the Kansas Jayhawks. We'll talk a little bit more about those games a little later on in the show. Coming up next, a visit with a very important member of the Cowboy basketball family. You stay with us as the Eddie Sutton Show continues. During the course of a basketball season, all sorts of interesting stories unfold for us. This week on the Eddie Sutton Show, we thought it would be interesting to hear from Sean Sutton and how he deals with playing for his father and then hear from his father on how he deals coaching his son. Whenever Oklahoma State takes possession of the ball, there's a good chance it'll end up in the hands of the right person. The responsibility of getting the ball to the right guy falls on the shoulders of 6'1 junior Sean Sutton, the head coach's son. Sean has been referred to as the coach's son forever. It can be bothersome, but it is something Sean has learned to live with but through his father, he has also learned how to play this game. My whole game has always been based on uh, trying to run the offense and get the most out of our players uh, the best I can. The bottom line is to win. And uh, uh, you know, through the years, my, the teams I've always played on uh, were able to win. And uh, that's the bottom line for me, run the show, do, what I, do, do whatever's necessary uh, for our team to win. Sean started his college career at Kentucky playing under his father's direction. He was the starting point guard as a sophomore. After sitting out last year, Sean transferred to Oklahoma State to again be with his dad. The discipline and defense stressed by the father is easily seen in the son. Uh, my dad, you know, he demands a lot of me off the court. Uh, both my parents do, and I've you know, been brought up with uh, a lot of values from them. and. You know, I was taught in early age what was right and what was wrong. And, uh, you know, it's helped me out a lot in life. 
Sean is getting a chance this year to spend a good deal of time around his parents because for the first time in his college career, he is living at home. Basketball is obviously discussed a great deal in the Sutton household. Although it is not the only topic of discussion, it will probably always be a part of Sean's life. 22 years, basketball's been a part of my life, and I can't imagine it, uh, you know, never being a part of it. And as soon as I get done, I hopefully, you know, I'll have two great years here at Oklahoma State, be able to get my degree, uh, then go on to coaching because uh, the ultimate goal for me is to be a college basketball coach someday. He's uh, very matter of fact about that, uh, Coach. I've I mean, tried to discourage oh, that. His mother you, has too, that, because uh, it isn't easy to be a coach sometimes. But uh, you know, he's been on the bench uh, as a youngster when I was at Creighton University, and then all those great years at Arkansas, he was around a lot of quality players and some outstanding teams, and then went on to Kentucky. And I think anyone who uh, knows a coach who has a son, coaches' sons bring that extra sense, uh, maybe to the court. Darren Alexander's that mm -hmm. way. And uh, I'm very proud of Sean as, uh, as his mother. Uh, he's a very unselfish young man. And as he mentioned, the bottom line is to win. And he'll make any sacrifice that uh, needs to be done in order for the ball club to win. I think he's helped our guards, Corey and, and Darwin. And, and that's a very close-knit group. There was a picture uh, in one of our last games where all three of them were hugging each other. And uh, I think Sean has helped from that standpoint. So. Uh, before we made that decision, and I didn't make it, I said, Sean, it's your decision where you're going to college. I called Al McGuire and uh, Jerry Tarkanian and three or four other coaches who had coached their, their son and asked them, what do you think? And they said, there'll be some tough times, but there'll be some great times, and uh, you get to see them every day. And so it's been a real joy for me to have the opportunity to coach Sean, and he is really thrilled to be here. You know, the Kentucky situation was one thing, but we, we've talked about building this program and rekindling the fire and bringing the program back to the glory days. And, and he's really having a lot of fun uh, as this program does develop. He plays with a great deal of emotion, uh, Coach. Is that something, you, you don't coach that, do you? That's just Well, that's I just encourage it on the part of all of our players to play the game with enthusiasm. I, I believe that basketball was meant to be played that way. And, and I really think that when you play with a lot of zest and enthusiasm, good things come your way. Uh, and they show up rebounding uh, defensively, uh, all the areas of the game. So uh, we encourage that uh, on the part of all of our uh, players. And, and they've, hey, they've responded in, a, in an A-plus manner. <laughs> okay. Uh, you stay with us. The Eddie Sutton Show continues. We'll talk about the games coming up. We'll be back right after this. We appreciate the correspondence we get here from you folks for the Eddie Sutton Show. If you have a, a question uh, or a comment that you'd like to make to Coach Sutton, you may do so by, by sending a postcard to Ask Coach Sutton, 101 Gallagher Iba Arena, Oklahoma State University, Stillwater, America, 74078. And uh, our question this week, Coach, comes from Don Miller of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And Don, you'll be receiving two tickets to a, a future Cowboy game. Uh, Coach, Mr. Miller would like to know if Cornell Hatcher is going to get a little more playing time this year. Cornell is going to definitely get more playing time. He had an outstanding week and was very instrumental in our victories uh, over the Buffaloes and the Cornhuskers. Has great defensive instincts, good passer, good quickness, very smart basketball player. Had an outstanding coach uh, with under John Phillips. and. Uh, mm -hmm. Basketball players develop at different stages. They'll go along and they get better and they hit a plateau and then they improve. Uh, he is definitely on the upswing. He's going up that mountaintop fast and uh, he is going to play a lot. Uh, if we're going to be successful, we've got to get good play off the bench like we did this last week. Okay, every time uh, when you get into Big 8 play, every ball game, real important. So let's take a look at what's going to happen around the Big 8 uh, this week. The first game of the week has Oklahoma playing at Kansas State. And then uh, midweek, Iowa State will come to Stillwater and take on the Cowboys. Nebraska will play at Kansas, and Missouri goes to play at Colorado. And then we finish off the week with Oklahoma State on the road to take on the Jayhawks. Iowa State will be at Kansas State, Colorado at Nebraska, and Oklahoma will be out of the conference uh, as they take on Seton Hall. So uh, I've heard you say before, Coach, you got to win them all at home. So Iowa State's in here, and then you got to take this show back on the road. 
Robbie, there's always more pressure on you to win at home. Uh, you can't afford to lose a game at home. Uh, if you do, then it takes away everything that we did this past week. So right now, our preparations are for Iowa State, and then after that, then we'll get ready to go up to Allen Fieldhouse, which is probably the toughest place <laughs> in the league to go and win. And Kansas right now is playing very well. I want to mention one thing. Dennis Burbank won a ball game uh, in our first game uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, he's been throwing off and on downstairs, and then after the game Saturday, he goes on to uh, uh, Baton Rouge to play uh, in a tournament down there. He'll either pitch against uh, Mississippi State or LSU, and uh, Gary Ward's going to have another outstanding ball club. I want to congratulate our women. Uh, they won over Nebraska yesterday. They play at Iowa State uh, Wednesday night in Kansas back here Saturday, and they're doing a great job. And we want to congratulate you. Great wins this past week. We're out of time for Eddie Sutton and Oklahoma State University. I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody. The Eddie